So, in this video, I'm going to talk about what are the things that make good cards. So, what makes a good card are three things. One, digestible, understandable. Two, flexibility and versatility. Three, relevancy. So, let's first start with one, digestible and understandable. Let's go. Okay, as you can see in front of you, let's start with number one. One, digestible, understandable. So I'm going to read from, you know, from here. So one of the biggest crimes on Yu-Gi-Oh cards is this. Many times we get cards from Japan. Since Yu-Gi-Oh originates from there, there are some meanings lost in translation, rendering the card pointless when it gets ported overseas, okay? Easy and clear to understand words and sentences make good cards. In fact, the simpler the card's effect, the better in my opinion, as these cards leave no room for play. Card interactions become easier to figure out and less confusion comes into gameplay. I'll give an example that follows this principle. See the following card, Pot of Greek. Simple, easy, everyone can understand it and play it. My saying for Yu-Gi-Oh cards, when everyone can understand the card, it's a good card. Remember, if no one can understand the card, who will play it? So as I showcase here with Paul Green, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh cards need to be understandable and they need to be universal across the board. They need to leave no room for debate in terms of what its effect is uh, and understanding the general uh, you know, context of what the card does in the big scheme of things. The simpler it is to understand, the better it is. And that is what makes a good Yu-Gi-Oh card, okay? Simple, keep it simple, you know? Nothing, you don't need to complicate the crap, just keep it simple. If the effects are simple, if it's simple, the effects are simple, the card layout is simple, it will go a long way. Simple is best. Let's go to the next thing. That right, so we'll go to number two, right? Two, flexibility and versatility. So the next point is, is this being flexible slash versatile? is the best thing a Yu-Gi-Oh card can have. This is not a quality seen often on cards, but when seen gives different interactions, encourages new board states, brings fresh new perspectives to gameplay and much more. A good card in Yu-Gi-Oh is like going from high definition to 4K. The experience, the viewpoints, perspective, all these factors allow you to see things previously not seen before. So what are the qualities that give a Yu-Gi-Oh card qualities that give the Yu-Gi-Oh card these qualities? A. Adaptability. So as we see here in red, being able to be used on the fly in any situation. Exactly. So for a card I can uh, give an example for that is Infinite Impermanence. Infinite Impermanence is one of the best examples of a really flexible card, a really flexible good card that can be used, you know, on the fly in any situation, you know, in your turn one, in turn two, stuff like that. So let's go to B. B, practicality. Having effects that can be used to interfere with card interactions. 
This again is very important. Sometimes, you know, you need effects that are practical. You know, you've got, you know, your opponent may have loads of effects on the board. You want to confuse them, you know, with, you want to chain block them, things like that. This is where a good card can come in and really save your backside, right? And really help you to chain block your opponent. So, is the card practical? Can it help you in a practical way? Is another good feature of a good card as well. So, let's go to the next point. See, unlimited application. This means can be used in any phase and still have the same effect. The phases have no limits to its uses. Indeed, this is one of the strongest and best things about good cards. They have unlimited application. You can use them in any phase. You know, this is what we get with a card again. I'll go back to Infinite Impermanence. Infinite Impermanence is a card you can use in any phase. You can use it in the draw phase, you can use it in the standby phase, you can use it in the main phase, uh, battle phase, uh, you know, main phase 2 or end phase. You know, as long as, you know, you follow, you know, the card's effect, you control your cards, you can use that card in any phase, right? You can even set it and use it as a normal trap. So, its applications, it's, it's unlimited application for infinite impermanence is absolutely fantastic, it's great. And I would consider it one of the best hand traps of all time because just because of its unlimited application. You know, for you know, best hand traps of all time, we're considering you give considering it is a actual hand trap, right? We do have others, but I definitely consider infinite impermanence to be the best ha actual hand trap in the game. That's a, actually a trap. Anyways, moving on, let's go to D. D, pressure amplifier, creates tension and adds added pressure merely existing. Now, this is another thing about good cards. What a good card does when it's applied appropriately on the board and the board state that it can do is that it can apply pressure to your opponent. For example, let's say you set, let's say you, uh, you know, you, you're against your opponent, you set, you know, some infinite impermanences down there and some other cards. Now, you're putting pressure on your opponent if you've made a significantly good board and you know your board state is looking nice and healthy, it's looking sweet, right? Then that infinite impermanence that is down there, right, especially if your opponent doesn't have uh, bankroll removal, can add added pressure to them and it may, you know, it may scare them a bit. And this is the thing about good cards. Good cards, you know, amplify the pressure onto your opponent, you know. The more good cards you have on the board, the added pressure your opponent will feel. So remember, good cards are, one, they're adaptable. As I say here, two, you know, practicality. They need to be, you know, they'll, they'll be pra they're practical. Three, C, three, they have, or C, they have unlimited application, right? And D, they amplify the pressure. So I'm going to go obviously and offer the next uh, you know card and just really show you like an example of you know a versatile card again. Okay, so let's go to this quick play spell called Forbidden Droplet. Forbidden Droplet is a quick play spell that came out last year in Rise of the Duelist, as we can see there. So let's read its effect, right? Send any uh, let's just move there. Send any number of, of uh, other cards from your hand and or field to the graveyard. Choose that many effect monsters your opponent controls and until the end of this turn, their attack is halved. Also, their effects are negated. In response to this card's activation, your opponent cannot activate cards or the effects of cards with the same original type monster slash spell slash trap as a card sent to the graveyard to activate this card. You can only activate one forbidden droplet per turn. Now, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about where we get all the things I was talking about in the previous uh, thing when I was saying flexible, flexibility and versatility. Now, if I can just go back to the previous slide, which is here, as you can see here, I talk about adaptability again. So Forbidden Droplet definitely fills that quota for being adaptable. It is practical, it has unlimited application, and it's a pressure amplifier. Let's go back to uh, Forbidden Droplet once again. So there we have Forbidden Droplet. So this is where, you know, Forbidden Droplet is a fantastic card. And this is a card, and this is an example of when you see a good card in Yu-Gi-Oh! that, that, that uh, ticks all those, that ticks all those major 
cornerstones almost means the key points that a good car should have. It should be adaptable. It should be practical, it should have unlimited application, and it should apply pressure to your opponent. Okay? So that's basically it. I think I've covered, you know, the second point when, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, good, good cards. Let's go to that third point. Okay, so let's uh, go to the third point, three, relevancy. So let's read uh, what it says there. Yes, the last thing, relevancy. Will the card be relevant? Has the effect gone out of style? Given the evolution of the game, this happens. There are some old cards that were good back in their release day, but today are rendered obsolete. Age catches all things, while there are some exceptions where some cards get better with age, like fine wine. This isn't the norm of most Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Indeed, this is the last thing when it comes to good cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Good cards, one final thing that makes a good card is, is it relevant to the format, right? And um, some, and as I've said here, you know, some good cards, you know, age like fine wine. And one of the cards that can say ages like fine wine is a card like, we can say like Forbidden Chalice. Forbidden Chalice is a card that came about, you know, during XYZ format. Still to this day, it is still considered, you know, a good card. Still, you know, a nice, you know, hand trap right there. And we have its successor, which is, we can say, Forbidden Droplet. Anyways, leaving that aside, uh, relevancy. What makes a card relevant? So let's go to, or let me go to the next slide and just showcase a relevant card. So let's just go to the next slide there. We have Infinite and Permanence. So let's go to Infinite and Permanence and read this card. So Target, right? If we can just, uh, yeah, move that mouse there. Yeah. Target, one face-up monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of this turn. Then if this card was set before activation and is on the field at resolution, for the rest of this turn, all other spell or trap effects in this column are negated. If you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. So this is an example of a relevant card. This card is always relevant as with the game as with the game's evolution now, it's become a lot more faster. You know, effects are monsters are easier to summon. And so you need that turn you need that turn one or turn two starter card, that blowout card, you know what I'm talking about? That uppercut to the solar plexus, right? To just pick your foot in hard, hit him hard, hit him fast, bro. So let's go back to the previous screen. Anyways, yeah. So infinite permanence is a is one of the best examples of a relevant card. It's going to be relevant for a very long time. Same thing with Forbidden Droplet, right? And so what makes a card relevant? What makes a card relevant is the effects that it has. Are they effects that matter in the, in the current scheme of things with the format that the, uh, the game is in? You know, do we, for example, in the format that we're in right now, what is it we do a lot? Do we special summon a lot? Do we use effects a lot? Do we negate a lot? Do we special summon a lot? Do we use the back row? Do we not use the back row? Do we use monster effects? Or we do not use monster effects? How about spell effects? Are they used more instead of traps? Or are traps used more instead of spells? You know, all these factors come into shape, you know, to shape a format. And these are the things you need to analyze, you need to study, you need to see, because you know, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is like homework, guys. Yes, it's like homework. You need to look uh, this up. You need to, you need to. Yes, you can obviously look it up. You know, you can look up the YouTubers, and obviously they will summarize all these other things. But the point is that I'm trying to say here is that relevant cards are all about what in, is not what is important in the game but what are the effects and what are the strategies that you see the majority of the player base doing? And what is it is the end goal of most, uh, you know, boards, board states. This is what you find out what is relevant. When you understand the end desire of board states in the game, when you, when you look at the end result and see, okay, so these are the board states. What board states do they uh, do people want you know in this current format what how do they want to anticipate what the uh, you know 
the opponent? Do they want to have more negation or stuff like that? Anyways, I'm going around in circles, but the point is, this is what makes, you know, relevant cards. And that's that's pretty much it. So I think that's it. So I'm going to just go on to, you know, to the, to the next thing about, you know, this, this topic. Okay, so we'll go to the last thing. That's it. Those are the three things needed to make good cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Look for those these three things when seeing a Yu-Gi-Oh card. If you do not see these three qualities, then now know that Yu-Gi-Oh card is not a good card. It will fall under another class of card. Look out for future videos where I cover different types of cards and show the indicators for why they are what they are. That's it. Hope to see you soon. Okay? We come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master my faith right is in your hands um hopefully i'll see hopefully you know you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel and uh, wait a couple of minutes and your seconds sorry and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel hope to see you soon and thank you